When we think about being our best selves, when we think about not just being our best selves for ourselves, but for our clubs and for our kids, is getting clear on are we relational in the work that we do or are we just doing transactions? So often it's easy in the grind that we're all in each and every day to continue to execute, to continue to sort of check the box. Years ago, I recruited and signed Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan's the head coach at University of Florida, just took a job in the NBA. Well, Billy, 10 years ago, we sit down with him, he signs with us because we had a lot of NBA coaches. And he said, hey, listen, I want to go to the NBA. You know, this college thing is exhausting, right? I just want to coach 80 games and get out of this recruiting rat race. We said, great, Billy, but gosh, I mean, you've had an unbelievable success story at Florida, and we need to look for the right job. I mean, we need to make sure we interview any NBA team as much as they interview you. Billy agrees. We get word about a year later or so that the Orlando Magic job's going to open up. We feel like this is a pretty good fit, so we call Billy and say, hey, in four or five days, this Magic's job is going to open up. What do you think? Are you interested? Billy said, absolutely, that's a great job. I'm really interested. We said, great. We call the Magic. We begin to negotiate the terms of that deal. We had negotiated every contract with the Magic since the inception of the organization. So we knew the team, the owners, the, the family that owned the team very, very well. So we begin to go through that process of negotiating that contract. At the end of that process, we're going back and forth throughout it, right? With Billy going through the terms of the deal, right? We're going back and forth on the base, on the bonuses, on the country club memberships for the wife, for him, the flights for everybody, all the stuff that goes into the contract. Most importantly, obviously, the terms of the financial parts of the deal. Billy loves the terms of the deal. He feels great. This is awesome. So Billy flies in to Orlando. We fly in from Atlanta to Orlando to go do a press conference at the Magic's Arena. They want to announce their new basketball coach. Perfect. So we fly in. Billy flies in. We land. We walk in. And as we sit in this boardroom where he executes six original contracts, six fresh original contracts, he signs the contracts right. And as I'm looking over the table of this boardroom, on the other side is a glass window. And on the other side of the glass window is a basketball court with all the media that are there to cover their new basketball coach and the announcement of the Magic Snooch coach. So we finish signing everything. We walk down to the, to the gym, and, and, Billy saw, and Billy sits and does a great job at the press conference, right? We take care of everybody. Billy feels great. This is awesome. We get back into a car. We fly back to Atlanta. Billy flies back to Gainesville. It was a Friday night, right? Let's go celebrate. So we go to this great restaurant. We get a great bottle of wine, and we're halfway through this bottle of wine, and Billy calls and says, hey, listen, I want to bring one of my assistants from Florida with me. Do you mind calling him and calling the team and negotiating that contract? We like referrals, right? We said, sure, Billy, no problem. So we call and negotiate that deal right then. So we ordered another bottle of wine. You know what I mean? What the heck? <laughs> the next morning at 7.30 in the morning, the phone rings and it's Billy. Hey, uh, listen, I don't want that job. Never mind. I just want to stay at Florida. So just call the Magic, tell them thank you for everything, but I'm going to stay at Florida. So just have them rip up those six contracts. Poof, like, right, like, Billy, man, we just told the world that you're taking this job. What I learned in that moment is that I never really asked Billy any of the tough questions. We just did the deal. The terms were fabulous. The dollars were great. We executed a terrific deal for Billy. But I never looked at Billy and said, hey, Billy, are you ready to look at those 18-year-old men who you sat in their living room at their homes and looked at their parents and looked at them and said, I'm going to be your basketball coach? Are you ready, Billy, to look at your athletic director who is an amazing man and say, hey, man, thank you for everything you've done for me, but I'm going to the NBA? Are you ready, by the way, Billy, that after two years, if you're not winning, you get fired in the NBA? So what does that look like? I never asked him any of those tough questions. You know how sometimes in life we walk out of a meeting or we hang up the phone and we go, oh, sweet, it didn't come up. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't come up, that's awesome. You walk out of a meeting, you hang up the phone, and you're like, oh, geez, I think that problem went away. <laughs> no, it's right there, man, it is right there. So we've got to make sure that we have the courage oftentimes in life to ask those tough questions so that we can truly
connect. The other piece is how many people in the room have folks that call you on the phone and when you look down at your phone when it rings, you go, oh my gosh. <laughs> and you just stare at it, right? And you're like, oh my god. I mean, and all you want to do in that moment is just hit end, you know? I would just challenge you to take a minute and say, who are the people that make you feel that way? And are they worth your energy? Are they really worth your energy? We only have so much time. We have children that we're supporting. We have kids that we're, in many ways, showing a better way. Making sure that we determine who really deserves our energy, who gets our energy, and who doesn't is so key to our ability to continue to move the needle on this amazing movement. To me, that's incredibly important. 